the separation between the perceiver and the perceived goes always to zero. Now we knew this about dreams. We've known it all along about dreams. When you wake up in the morning, you see that that space was in the dreamer. When you dream, you have a dream body, and there are other dream bodies in your dream, and the whole thing is in the space of your dream. But the whole dream, the space of the dream, and all those dream bodies are in the dreamer. What we did not know until 1905 was that in the waking state, it's the same. The separation between the perceiver and the perceived has been always at zero. I know you will not find it easy to accept that. I've been working at it for 40 years. <laughs> that's what the equations say, and that's what we check. We don't check the physicist's gut responses. We check the equations, and that's what the equations say. Now, I should very much like to see that everybody understands these equations of Einstein. The separation equation is space and time come in as a pair of opposites and that what we see is, as matter is just potential energy and that they should understand Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In my opinion, if you can't handle those three equations, you've thrown in your sponge. <laughs> now I think it must be time for me to quit or I'll wear you all out. But if you want to ask me some more questions, have at it. Yes. What do you call a Dobsonian telescope? <laughs> An altazimuth telescope. <clears throat> However, I wrote a very nasty letter to Meade. I was up in Oregon, and they had a 16-incher up there with a great big ground board like this, about that big around. Guess how thick it was? Three quarters of an inch. Guess how many feet it had underneath? Nine! Guess how come they can use all nine feet? Because it's only three quarters of an inch thick. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I wrote them a real nasty letter. You can't run telescopes like that. I said, if you're going to bandy my name around, you owe me the courtesy to make something that works. <laughs> hey. They had six or seven pieces of Teflon on the ground board, around the edge, on which the bottom board moved. And it takes quite a bit of a yank to get it to go around. I was disgusted. And they've got the tube painted white. None of you should paint your telescopes white. White paint is full of titanium dioxide, and it radiates feverishly in the infrared. We're not concerned about how these things handle visible light in the daytime. We use them at night. We have to know what they do in the infrared. And if NASA wants it to be black in the infrared, they paint it white with titanium dioxide and send it out there. Paint them any color, any dark color. Don't paint them any light color. What I call a Dobsonian telescope. You know, I didn't put my name on those things. <laughs> We've had a name for them all along. But what happened was that in the 60s, the telescopes were only four inches and six inches, and they had to put, uh, in order to see galaxies and things, they had to track them across the sky. So they were mostly on equatorial mounts, because they couldn't see the galaxies unless they took pictures, and then they saw them with their cone cells in the daytime. That's cheating. You never see galaxies with your cone cells. And your rod cells are stupid. In the daytime, you can see the leaves of the trees. At night, you can still see the trees. At night, your ladybird beetle cells go fast asleep, and you're left with your rod cells, which are stupid. So in order to see the galaxies, you have to have a big telescope and a great big image. Use high power, not low. You've got to use something like 15 powers per inch of aperture if you want to see those dim things. Don't go to low power like it says in the literature. I don't know how come the literature got written like that. Either those people don't look through their telescopes or nothing happens above their shoulders. Yay. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> what else? Am I dismissed? I have a few questions. Go ahead. All right. Uh, you said that thing about NASA. If they wanted to appear black in the infrared, they painted white? Yes. 
Well, then what's wrong with it being white? Doesn't we it... don't want our telescopes to be, to be radiating in the infrared because what they do at night is to exchange infrared with the night sky, and the night sky is a hell of a lot colder than the ground. And they exchange infrared with the ground, which is a hell of a lot hotter than the night sky. You explained that to me before, but that doesn't answer my question. If it appears black, you mean it would appear black on infrared film? No, 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 I don't mean that. I mean that it exchanges radiation easily. Oh. A black body is something that radiates in all kinds of colors. That's all. In the white paint, titanium dioxide radiates and absorbs radiation in the infrared. If it can radiate in one wavelength, it can absorb in that wavelength. The universe has these funny rules. If you can, see, if you can see, receive radiation in one wavelength, you can radiate it in the same wavelength. So uh, titanium dioxide uh, radiates and absor absorbs radiation in the infrared. But it gets very little, the top of your telescope gets very little radiation in the infrared from the night sky. But it radiates away, and the top side cools down. The bottom side stays warm by exchanging radiation with the ground. Even in balance. What? Even in balance. Well, the top of your telescope gets cold, and inside your tube you have cold air coming down like this across your field of view. The bottom stays warm, and you got warm air coming up across your field of view, and it wipes you out. When, I, when I, I had to look at an 18-inch F6 in Alberta, uh, Canada, years ago, and he had a collar sticking out past the collar that holds the eyepiece and all that and the diagonal, he had a collar sticking farther out, about nearly a foot, thin black stuff. One third of this problem was there. Another third was in his black shroud, because that's not thermally opaque. The top side cools off, the bottom side stays warm, get cold air coming down, warm air coming up inside. So we had one third of the problem in the collar out front, we took it off. Another third was in his shroud, we took it off. He has one third left in the collar around the eyepiece and the collar uh, and, and the, the box at the bottom. But you see, he thought it was a real lousy night with these big star images. <laughs> but it wasn't a lousy night. The problem was with the telescope. I, yes. I, I wasn't finished. Yes. When you look into the night sky or even the daytime sky, don't think that you're looking up. You will not understand it at all. As soon as you think that that direction is down, damn it all, you'll see how deep it is. <laughs> Should we tell that to the star you see, hustler? You see, our genetic programming, our genetic programming really keeps the pubic wall pulled over our eyes. It just tells you that you're perfectly safe if that direction is up. And if you think that direction is down, then you can see how deep it is. When you see somebody standing on a roof, it doesn't look so bad. But when you're on the roof, it looks bad. <laughs> Looking up, it doesn't look so bad. That's just genetic programming. It's the same thing that makes the moon look so big when it's down on the horizon. Your genetic programming tells you that if it's on the horizon, it's a very far away. It's very far away. The clouds are like that. The gulls are like that. The zeppelins are like that. The airplanes are like that. Everything's like that, except the sun and the moon. And your genetic programming tells you that since it's way, way over there on the horizon, it must be huge to look that big. And when it's over here, oh, it's so close, it must have shrunk. <laughs> you know, we astronomers know exactly how big it is. <laughs> yes. nothing to say about nothing <laughs> except that it doesn't exist the Big Bang people want to make the universe out of nothing but they can't find any <laughs> okay, sure. I must be dismissed <laughs>